Hello, Dear Nambara, and welcome to yet another episode of Eyewitness. I am your host, Choma Mareles. Today, we are in the office of the Honorable Commissioner for Environment, architect Michael Okonkwo. Hello, sir. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. All right, let's just get right to it. A lot of India and Ambara have spoken to our team and they have some questions. My first question is this. Um, what do you think uh, is the main important issue that is um, affecting uh, the environment um, in an Ambara state? Well, bar none, erosion is the biggest uh, thing affecting the environment in our state. Um, we, uh, the same thing that we enjoy by the nature of our soil that makes us very rich in agriculture is also the same thing that's making us susceptible to erosion, number one, which is our soil composition. And of course, uh, man-made problems contribute to the erosion problems that we have. Um, you know, I'm sure that uh, everybody has uh, heard His Excellency Chief Dr. William Gala talk about this as one of the biggest challenges we have in the state uh, as regards the environment. Um, it has been said um, that we do have uh, over 970 active erosion sites and counting. Um, in the state, uh, whilst uh, Anambra State used to be second uh, smallest in land mass, second only to Lagos State. But recently, um, the, the, there's been a shift where we are obviously the smallest now in land mass. Over 4,000 square uh, you know, kilometers is now being uh, reduced. Lagos is growing into the ocean and we are um, reducing by body erosion. So that is a big problem. Afambo Gabriel, she's a Ramu culture. I am a member of the internal secretary of the Children and Seraphim Church. We get in a meeting, Eba. And I need to know the government of Anambra State, led by his Excellency, Chief Doctor Willy Madabroch Obiano, Makolo Moloro, Eloran Ozo. Oza, as of 2014, Mbuzetoro, he may be Obanine, Mana, and Makosa, also Batara, Galora Oza, America, Motona, where today, Okuna Gapania today. I need to hear my kakomere me. I just go here and I yoke where can keep for and for. Ina anye gafun and ke ozo ke gafiri our church. Aro ya aro. So I must say, ebo mu a former ronka. Ya mu ku a former ronka ku keep for and for. Okay, so let's talk about um flooding and erosion. Um, what is your ministry actually doing to contain the ravaging effects um of erosion in the environment? Um, and what role is the new map um, playing um, in this regard? Flooding leads to erosion. Um, it is the biggest threat to our environment and our state. And let me talk about how we mitigate that. We have four ways that we mitigate um, and tackle erosion and uh, flooding issues. Uh, there is direct state intervention through Ministry of Environment, partnership intervention with the federal government, um, what we call the ecological fund access, and then of course the um, 
uh, Numa, which is a national regulation and watershed management project, Numa, which is partnership or tripartite partnership between the state, federal government, and World Bank. This means that this, the World Bank uh, brings money and expects the states to pay their counterpart. And I'm here okay. to announce, always very happy to announce, that His Excellency Chief Dr. Wilbur has paid the state's counterpart. And that's why we are having access to the funds. Um, for a year, in fact, from last year to now, we have had um, the release of about 12 billion naira through this partnership between the state and the, and the World Bank to tackle the Russian sites. And I know that you know that on Tuesday last week, uh, His Excellency accompanied His Excellency to tour these uh, Russian sites where the uh, intervention is being done uh, through the new map partnership. Then I have a list here of, you know, I mean, too long to even start to tell you, but it's, it's available for uh, review. I had always told Indianamba to report uh, town union, uh, the uh, town union uh, presenters of the different communities, all one each one of them, uh, to be in partnership with the state. Let your people report. We want to catch them before they get too big. And then once we get that, we have a program where we do emergency to stop it. And then when it gets to certain level, the state will do. And then when it gets really big, we do it through World Map, uh, World New Map, or uh, we we seek for funding through ecological fund. Okay. But do you ever seek um, funding from the federal government and have they? Um, be forthcoming in terms of partnering with your ministry yes. to combat that as well. Yes, there are some interventions done directly from the uh, federal government. Let me just tell you, His Excellency fires off all cylinders when it comes to this. Um, I recall about two months ago, he sent me to deliver letters that he personally wrote to the presidency, to um, World Bank, to Federal Ministry of Environment and Ecological Fund, which is HGF, and I hand delivered those letters. And I mean, within a couple of days, they all started to respond. I know that there has been a lot of chatter about federal government maybe funding some uh, flooding issues. You know, um, the federal government has not funded a lot of the claims that the state has submitted to the federal government. Okay. Even from 2012, flooding menace that the world witnessed. And then now, compounded by the one that recently happened, where one quarter of the state was submerged underwater. His Excellency never relents in asking for the federal government to help the state, you know, pay some of these claims and then help us to help the <laughs> I told them that the baby that uh, you came here uh, especially to see for yourself. Uh, he has seen a sample of it. Uh, we have seen the the, the building uh, that is uh, submerged already. They say they, they sleep on top of the of, on top of the roof, uh, on, on top of the decking up there. You know, among other places they've seen. They've done the aerial surveillance already, and they've seen for themselves the quantum of the uh, the, the flood. Uh, the vice president, His Excellency, will now address you, Your Excellency. <laughs> Well done, oh. well done, oh. well done. I have come to come and see for myself what is going on here, and um, I've seen that a lot of the damage that has been done. I've seen a lot of the damage that has been done here. I, on behalf of the president, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, we commiserate with all of those who have lost. Uh, their livelihoods who have lost property, 
farmlands in particular. But we're also here to assess the damage and see what can be done to help those of you who have lost uh, uh, their assets, people who have lost uh, farmlands and all of that. So uh, we have also brought some relief. I'm here with the Director General of NEMA, uh, the National Emergency Management Agency, and I'm sure the local SEMA is here. I want to commend the state government for the work that has been done so far. I think that their response has been swift, and that has also helped a great deal in stabilizing uh, the situation here. So the federal government still has a long way to go in terms of helping Anambra um, combat um, flooding and the ocean problem. Yeah, well, let me just say that we are very, very glad the federal government has responded. One of the uh, you know, best uh, results of their response is the one going on at uh, Federal High Court uh, erosion site, where the minister came here, uh, His Excellency Chief Dr. Will, we're going to talk to him you know, about that minute. The, um, uh, the country director of World Bank also came and he made the plea and thank God work is going there. So the, the federal government has responded in some cases of erosion. The flooding, we have a lot of claims that have not yet that are yet to be refunded or even paid to the state. My name is Zubi. I am the site manager for this project and we are doing a big drain to control the erosion by the High Court, Federal High Court site. And uh, we're going very well. And uh, we are almost through with the, almost you can say 60 to 65% of fill. And we have 35, 30%, 35% from concrete drains done. And uh, you can see, all work going very well. This job starts uh, two months before. Uh, to control the erosion, otherwise the court will, uh, building will go and other buildings. Even uh, behind the high court, some erosions, there are big erosions. That is interesting. Um, so, how can we protect the environment from, you know, since erosion is such a big issue in Anambar, like, how is your ministry helping to protect you know, the um, environment from erosion, and how can Andean Ambara also play a part? Well, you know, uh, the protection of the environment is uh, a partnership thing between the government and the Andean Ambara. I'm from Roberto in Anaqua. About Ubo, a village of Obinago. About the by. Government <laughs> I love you. I know 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 community Nambo 
On the government part, we first identified the biggest contributors to um, the erosion methods, number one of which we have identified to be improper termination of drainages. Okay, when, you when you construct roads, um, drainages are to be terminated to natural water bodies. So if you abruptly terminate them, they start digging and erosion grows. That's number one. Number two is blockage of the said drainages. And this is where uh, the uh, people of India now are um, you know, um, you know, that's where we, we have, uh, we all have responsibilities. And that's why we keep saying that nobody should put uh, waste, waste garbage in the drainage system. Uh, when people construct, they should first get approval so that the approval um, or approving agencies who are actually trained in determining what's proper mm -hmm. and the construction so that people will turn so and then of course um, trees especially there are some species of trees that help us hold the soil so we frown at deforestation uh, cutting down trees in fact his excellency uh, is considering um, the legislation that would encourage people if you plant trees it will give you um, credit uh, in, in the approvals uh, fees. Um, in fact, we, we encourage people to do surgical clearing where you're about to build uh, buildings. You do surgical clearing where you don't just clear everything because our people are not in the habit of planting trees. So, the ones that grow naturally or that's why I have been planted, people cut them down without replacing them. Right. I am so lucky that my job is uh, a continuing thing from when I was the managing director of Water Capital. We launched one, one million uh, tree planting, which is geared towards uh, really saving our environment. So, we have, where that is going, where we did a, a, a 6,000 trees as uh, you know a way of kickstarting the program okay. uh, all along the expressway from Amansi to um, Abag and Abagpat. Uh, of course we had challenges because we have uh, the cows that marooned the tree, uh, the roads, eat some of them up and that really brought about about us you know but that's another story yeah so we've done that and it's going well and, and india number are keying into into that yes they're keying um you know planting trees you know um a chinese adage that said that the best time to plant a tree was 25 years ago the next best time is today afambo honorable mrs victoria from okuka ebabu minaj road odumo obosi if a mebula babuna, mbize, chalk on a laioza. We didn't know that we till the cossia. Nada gazeba, Ndiobosi, where Bajelo, Obiano, wait till the enku, and Yamaka, Corbianoza, Malay for Yeme, Nyabo, Akoku, Edike, Webia, we feature and dobosi and Yamili, no boss in Kataya for no bros on Ekochi, Yabum Bize. Na nozo na agaze ni asiriri werere. Ina anya kita ifona, otutu ndo obosi, neje onecha. Mwobo na abwada, uzo opi iweka. Boza, kafana abofa kotoa, ebo oza faya amwa potaze ebo na ame barracks. Iru ame barracks, koza ya amwa potaze. So na inwa bundo obosi neje, governor ya kpoku edike, 
nukute ekene ai na ebu ai bulo ekene na okpa we na ebu jelia um we you talked a little bit about um uh, dumping waste and dumping solid waste as it's being um, part of why the drainages are, are, are blocked um are there specific sites that are zoned for those solid waste that uh, and are india number aware of where those um, sites are located yes we do have uh, approved dump sites we try to locate them strategically within the uh, geopolitical material zones. Um, we have one in Oka, which is uh, in um, uh, along uh, Isiago Oasis. Uh, we have two in Onisha Oasis. The biggest of our dump sites is located on Onisha Uwere Road, um, and then of course we have one at Simpoli Zinaga. We have one in a name called Webet location. We have one in a club here in Agwata. So, but what is key is that these dump sites are not necessarily meant for the masses in their number to actually go there. We do have designated locations for waste bins and we encourage people take these waste wastes properly tied in bags, not necessarily just strewn around. Properly tied in bags, place them properly, excuse me, into the waste bins and then people whose job it is to collect from those waste bins will then take them to the proper uh, dump sites. But uh, India number were uh, formerly uh, sensitized about Oh yeah, we've, we've, we've been doing that. In fact, there are jingles going on right now trying to let India number. I'm not relenting, we're increasing we still, our There's still a lot yeah, of work to be done. To be done yeah. There is a way to convert the waste to wealth. And that's where recycling comes in. Does the state have any recycling plans or in place, or is there a plan to build, you know, um, recycling plants um, all around Anambra State okay, to right. also help um, take care of the solid waste problems? Yes. Right now, we do not have any uh, recycling plants, but there is experimental one uh, that, that is being done, not necessarily a plant. Uh, it's being done through Aswan, which is an Anambra State Waste Management Agency. Okay. Uh, whose job truly is to take care of water capital territory. Um, there is uh, an experimental recycling that was established two years ago in Ogwono. And what that one is, is actually more of a place where we separate biodegradables and non biodegradables. And then we turn the biodegradables into several things, including uh, manures and uh, even feeds for some of the um, uh, livestock. But that is a very small beginning. But the government's uh, strategy, end game, is to have proper waste processing plants. Um, but His Excellency Chief Dr. Woody Obiano actually took it upon himself to travel to Austria recently to see things for himself, where things, uh, one of these type of uh, things work. And he was able, he was actually amazed as to what he saw. When he came back, he usually just don't travel. When he does, he follows up. The follow-up is that now, His Excellency, I'm very thrilled to say, has actually mobilized the Austrian company to do a feasibility study on how to properly establish uh, waste uh, processing, uh, which is otherwise known as waste to wealth or waste to energy, uh, which is a recycling uh, process. Um, so the people have been mobilized, they're doing the study right now. That study will inform what the state does next, but our aim is to do it properly. So what is your um, ministry and this administration doing to solve the, this problem of um, pollution and um, air pollution in our state? Okay, first uh, we know that uh, improper waste uh, management is a big contributor to air pollution. Um, like I have said before, um, siting of uh, industries that uh, otherwise uh, emit uh, toxic pollution and toxic emissions, um, we identified. And so we have um, um, uh, made our efforts more in making sure that the approvals process is done. And of course, we established 
well, the federal government uh, has, a, a, you know, environmental impact assessment that uh, has to be taken. That those are all parts of ways of checking the air pollution. But like I said, sensitization campaign um, is a bigger or a better way, in fact, so that people know the causes of air pollution and this is from actions that lead to it. Great. So you, you mentioned the federal government. How is your uh, ministry liaison with the federal government to actually enforce these things? Because you can do jingles and then people can forget the jingles and still continue. How do you actually make sure that it is enforced on India number and everyone in India number is Okay, well the federal government is on ground by way of NETRA. They are actually situated in this building with us. Okay. Um, I wonder that believe in synergy. This government believes in synergy. His Excellency is always encouraging the MDAs to synergize with the, the federal counterparts so that we can all do things together. The federal Ministry of Environment and the state Ministry of Environment, uh, the, you know, the Minister of Environment is my friend, and we're always communicating so that we, we align our actions. So we work closely with NEDRA in the pursuit of, uh, you know, uh, making sure that their pollution is continued. How does your ministry actually sanction you know, the industries or the companies that um, do emit these things or the drivers who are driving these um, cars in the environment? How do you actually, um, again, enforce and sanction them? When, you know, do you move the cars out of the road? Do you seize the cars? Do you impound them? What, what does your ministry do? Okay, first we start with the biggest uh, polluters, which are industries. Uh, factories that you know, yeah, yeah we, we have um, people, consultants that go around checking these things. If they find that these industries, factories, operators do not have the proper measures to curtail emission, they get sealed. We have the power to do so this. they can if they yeah, they will be sealed until they, they mitigate the problem. Okay. okay. Number two, if we do see any actions vis a vis, you know, vehicles that, are, that really do emit, we will impound. The people are fined, they will take it to court. We have processes for enforcement and we do follow them. By the way, um, there is, you know, whatever you do um, as a government always has to be backed by the law. There are some laws and legislation. Uh, legislation backing us. Um, there is a federal law, and as the state ministry, we are required to make sure that the laws are kept. And His Excellency has recently um, made sure that we have um, in, in the legislature, uh, no, in the judiciary sector, that we do have mobile courts, otherwise known as uh, uh, enforcement courts, where you can just have people charged immediately. You know, when they, they press like a mobile court. Oh well, yeah, that, that that really helps. So if I'm in a car and I'm driving and I see one that is a minute, I can call your office and. Well, you can call us, <laughs> but actually we do work in synergy with uh, vehicle inspection uh, officers, uh, okay. otherwise known as VIOs. They're supposed okay. to check vehicles for roadworthiness, and part right. of being roadworthy is to be sure that your catalytic converter is actually it's working, working so that you don't emit. So either us or them. Or, um, you know, uh, Ministry of uh, Transport, we all work in synergy. Where you have street traders, that means there's going to be a lot of litter, and then there's going to be a lot of garbage. Um, what is your ministry and this administration doing to contain that and then to make sure that, you know, um, that is uh, minimized? Okay, first of all, I am sure that I became known in Anambra. As soon as I took office in, in March um, 26 of 2018, um, I galvanized upon His Excellency's mandate, galvanized his ministry, and we swung into action. Um, you know, pursuing a law that is called uh, uh, no uh, street trading law. In Anambra State. State. There is a law, and then based on that law, we, we embarked on removing uh, people who are trading uh, on the streets. The streets, actually, uh, people should really understand that convenience that you think you have by just stopping to buy something for somebody on the road is actually causing all kinds of menace. Yes. You know, people are susceptible to accidents, 
um, where there is road conge uh, congestion, which leads to people spending more time on the road than otherwise they should. And then the more medicine then, is what you just alluded to, which is when people trade on the streets, there is a tendency to use them. Right. The laboring, you know, ends up in our drainage system. Unblocks. And most of the times, these traders, your street traders, actually sit on top of our gutters. So what we did as soon as I took office is to embark on a month drive and then we sustained it by redoing that every so many months. Cool. Where we actually moved the people. In, the conjun traders, in conjunction with the Ministry of Transport, we moved the traders. Um, starting with our nation where this act is, uh, is more uh, prevalent. And then to Nehri, to Walker, and then of course Ministry of Environment helped us to do the rest of the state. So um, we are about to reorganize and do it again because you have to sustain the action before these things can get you. Just to be clear, are you saying that it is um, a law yeah. and, and, and legislation already in place that okay. makes it illegal for um, street trading to take place? Yes. And if, India and are aware of that. In fact, I published that because I thought maybe people didn't know. So okay. as soon as we started our actions, I published it in the paper, I published it on the web. Um, yeah, just to give you an example. If you trade on the street, you are subject to a 2,000 Naira fine and up to two weeks in jail. It's serious. Speaking of fines, um, let's talk about the environmental levies. Um, the Nambara would like to know what the um, legal levies are um, and what your ministry is doing to curb the legal um, levy collection from you know, thousands. Great question. Um, we have officially about 15 what we call IGR, internally generated revenue heads. That means levies, which may be like environmental impact assessment, mm -hmm. affluent discharge, um, uh, sanitation levy. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on, but it's about 15 of them that are official. We do have uh, people who are authorized by this ministry to pursue those under authority letter um, appended by the chief of staff of the state government. Because governor, our governor chief, Dr. Uwe, believes in checks and balances. Whilst it's the ministry's um, uh, you know, prerogative to, to uh, authorize, to be representing the Ministry of Environment, we have uh, arrested, prosecuted, and shown examples with some of them. But this is an state. it is very difficult. A lot of people try to take advantage, but we are not relenting. What do you think is difficult? Uh, well, because people are not very um, honest. They want to enrich themselves rather than have um, these uh, fees paid to the government. I want to actually let people know that government doesn't pluck money from the trees <laughs> to be able to do uh, services that benefit the animal. It is the same internally generated revenue that we collect that will enable the government to then you know, provide services to another. Right. So I think if people put it in perspective, they would then understand why it is very essential that, uh, you know, when people pay off, you know, take this money from the, uh, the official coffers and line their pockets. They are actually, you know, like taking things away from the Anambra. Like so I employ the Anambra needed to join us in partnership. When you see people doing illegal levy collection, be a good citizen, report them. If you see something, say something, we will act. Okay, we are talking about cleaning up the streets and stuff. Now, let's talk about beautification. As you are cleaning it up, you have to sort of beautify. So what is your ministry doing in terms of uh, the beautification um, uh, process that you build in? Um, leisure parks, amusement parks, or um, any other type of parks and stuff. And you know. Okay. Um, well, we are very lucky to have a governor who loves clean and organized environment, beautified environment. Um, again, I was part of a committee in 2016 that was sent to Lagos. I chaired that committee, or I led that committee to Lagos State. Our mandate from His Excellency Chief Dr. William was to go and understudy 
Lagos State's success stories on how they actually uh, succeeded in beautifying Lagos, even with the population, right. into what is turning to become, um, a, you know, urban uh, uh, park, you know, guard, parks and gardens. And so we came back, we are applying that. Then His Excellency went even further. This ministry, Ministry of Environment, used to contain within it the beautification arm. But he feels, His Excellency does, feel that this uh, issue of beautification has to be taken more seriously and therefore he created a whole agency to deal with it called uh, um, Leisure Park and you know, Street uh, Beautification and Leisure Park Agency. Um, and they started operating uh, within the last three months. They have their hands full. There are a lot of uh, uh, directives from His Excellency and also from this ministry. Uh, we are helping them, we're working with them. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's good to know. Um, we can't talk about the environment without talking about global warming. Um, what is this ministry, especially um, this administration, doing to um, curb global warming, um, even if it's on a, a smaller scale in the state? Okay, first of all, simply say global warming is uh, as a result of holes on the ozone layer, right? The ozone layer is a protective layer, um, but with, uh, you know, carbon uh, emissions, we put holes in. And so what we are doing, you know, in tandem with the rest of the world, is things, in fact, it, it, it's, it's good that this question is coming at this point because I will then refer you back to all we've talked about. Right. You know, carbon uh, air pollution, uh, you know, doing proper waste management, um, and then, you know, afforestation. Right. Because if you if you have more trees and more cut a lot of trees down, they eat up the carbon dioxide that we have, and give out oxygen, and everybody's happy. So, all these are things that's, you know, we are aligning to the standards, you know, um, recognized by the world. And uh, you know, we're fully in doing that. And um, so, you, um, how are you uh, partnering with other agencies? Like, are there specific agencies that you also want to partner with to make sure that the sort of um, environment or crisis that we have in our environment is is continued? Yeah, we look to the world. Okay. There are several, you know, world health organization. We have, you know, World Bank has all kinds of um, programs through UN Habitat. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, two weeks ago, I was in Belgium, in Brussels, representing His Excellency Chief Dr. William Yellow, where he was invited to uh, join the rest of the world, but represented by what we call ACP states, African, Caribbean, and Pacific states, in discussing how to, um, you know, uh, upgrade our slums. Because I had said in the beginning that slums is where all these things, mostly, but these things. I mean, look at the world, you know, when you talk about Bangladesh, that's where the, most of these things happen because of... In the their, slums. Yeah, yeah in the slums. So, the, the, that, that conference that I represented in the SNC was actually focusing on urban upgrade, you, you know, with, with an aim to curbing all these things we talked about. So, what I'm saying is that we're doing our part, but we're actually also tagging with the rest of the world through all the different organizations, done by European Commission, by um, and of course World Bank. And um, bringing in local a little bit, so there are programs by a ministry to also sensitize um, the number about global warming, because I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about global warming yeah. um, in their village. We're talking about Nico, like what does someone in the local know about global warming and how it's contributing? To well, it goes back again to the whole sensitization of how to do We do have workshops that we have done and all okay. this and we want to do it. <laughs> On that note, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to come to your office um, to um, have this interview with you. And I want to thank Indiana Ambar at home that are watching. Make sure that you tune in to the next episode. Thank you for watching. I wanted to really thank uh, Eyewitness crew. Um, I was always looking forward to this type of uh, a group that would do exposés. And it, that's how we learn. So I thank all of you for this initiative, wonderful initiative. And to Indiana Ambar, I continue to beg 
for your partnership in making Anambra clean and healthy. I, Architect Michael M. Okonkwo, the Honorable Commissioner for Environment, am a witness to the giant strides by His Excellency, Chief Doctor Willie M. Obiano, the Executive Governor of Anambra State, born out of extraordinary vision for the benefit of Andi Anambra. The shining light that we bear We're the only ones to make her brighter The only ones to make her better The only